As far as I know, um, there are only nine of us. There are only about 500 of us. One day, you're fine, and then you start deteriorating. These patients have been on a desperate journey for answers. They each suffer from medical mysteries that have seemed unsolvable until now. Medical professionals tell you, well, I don't know. Then you think, well, well, if they don't know, we you know what's the outlook for me. It's been a long journey, almost 25 plus years. Researchers here at Keck Medical Center of USC are tracking down new clues to solve, diagnose, and provide beneficial treatment for some of the world's most rare and mystifying diseases. We are like private investigators. It's that we're taking our background scientific knowledge and pairing that with clues that the patient is providing. And I don't know why I'm being emotional right now, but it's a complete change of life in the sense of I can't hike with my kids, I can't walk, I can barely go to the grocery store. Um, and it's a fear for them to think, you know, is mama going to be around? And I want to train young doctors who are interested in solving those problems. It's hard for physicians to stick with a patient whose symptoms they can't explain or who has problems that they can't fix. Doctors Howard Liebman and Casey O'Connell want to change that. Their team at Keck Medical Center of USC uses a collaborative approach to unlock some of the mysteries of rare blood diseases. I was diagnosed with a blood disorder. There are many clues that um, may not in and of themselves lead to an obvious diagnosis. No one had an answer. Dr. O'Connell said, let's investigate. A simple clue from the patient's personal history provided an important tip for Dr. O'Connell and her team. I was prematurely gray around 12. I have a sister who was prematurely gray. And then my daughter, who around five, started showing gray hair. And sure enough, it came out to be something to do with my telomeres. Telomeres are basically strands at the end of our genes that are supposed to protect those genes as they divide. So in fast dividing cells in our body, like our hair, if you don't have these caps to protect the DNA, then you can get aging. And so we realized that this was probably what was happening in various organs in the body. Patients with rare disorders may present with unusual or seemingly unrelated symptoms. I found out that I had no antibodies in my system. That he had a unique antibody in the blood that was clearing one of the clotting proteins from his blood. We discovered he not only had the antibody, but he had a unique antibody. And so it allowed us to give information to his clinician uh, to um, uh, undertake treatment that could target the antibody. I do not believe I'd be here if Dr. Liebman had not diagnosed me with immune. Problem that I have. I had very discreet symptoms um, almost 25 plus years. I had uh, high blood pressure. I had a, a, a stroke. When I took over her care, we still had no explanation for this constellation of unusual findings. We initiated a therapy that we use frequently in multiple myeloma, and lo and behold, uh, Gitu, who had pretty much lived in the hospital for the year leading up to this, uh, because of a variety of problems she had developed, uh, went into a very nice remission and improved dramatically. And I feel this is the right time to push ahead and make people aware and so that doctors don't give up on patients. Dr. O'Connell and Dr. Liebman hope to complement USC's tradition of excellence in diagnostic hematology by creating a visionary new center for the diagnosis and management of rare diseases that affect the blood. So having a center allows us to look at a specific problem and start to mobilize the resources that we're going to need to solve that problem before the patient even walks through the door. 
You need to have resources and laboratories that can, can ask questions that you can't ask. And, um, and then coming and bringing this information together. Personalized medicine is time and labor intensive, especially for patients with rare or undiagnosed diseases. Philanthropy absolutely can give us the freedom to take risks. And so you undertake those investigations only with the support that comes in from gift funds. And sometimes there are donors, benefactors, that, that want the doctors to ask questions. They've already found answers for Gitu, Rehanna, and Robert. I really do believe that Dr. Lieben saved my life. He's actually, with good care and close observation, uh, is alive today much longer than, than the overwhelming average person with this very rare disorder. If we don't expose these diseases, if we don't investigate these diseases, we're not going to have treatment. We're going to have people that are sick and getting sicker without a positive view for the future. I love life. There are problems, but there's nothing better that they've come up for so far. One of the things that makes us different here at USC is that sometimes those clues and those steps take years or even decades to finally end up at an answer. Help us make a place for patients who are suffering with diseases that affect the blood for which they've basically been written off by most of the medical community.